This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on February the 22nd, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, good afternoon everybody. I hope everybody is doing just well, well, well. Um, today we are going to talk about some very recent news that is very, very important to all of us. How many have been following the news since last Wednesday? One guy. You, you've been following the news. Um, the, the news particularly about Apple. Oh yes. Okay. Everybody's been talking about Apple. This uh, story broke last Wednesday uh, when uh, Apple uh, and their CEO, Tim Cook, uh, posted on the Apple blog site um, about the, uh, the American government um, is going to require them, sue them, to... Uh, unlock an iPhone that was found at the site of a terrorist attack in California. Now, the story has been a little jagged coming out, so I'm going to try and give you an order of how things started to happen. Um, and why it is so important, um, this story is so important for all of us. Okay, attack happened um, two months ago, I guess it was. Uh, part of the evidence that was collected was this iPhone, an iPhone 5, 5C to be um, more correct about it. And the iPhone was locked. It was locked with a PIN number uh, or, um, or something of that ilk. And um, when... The modern operating system of Apple in their iPhones uh, is activated with a, with a pin to unlock it. You've got 10 kicks at the cat. 10. If on the 11th try you don't get it, the phone wipes. It becomes a brick. And so knowing that, Apple or, or the, uh, the government entity, the FBI, was a little bit careful about not trying to do too much to the phone while it was in their possession. What they did do was they asked erroneously, stupidly, yeah. they asked the owners of the iPhone, which was the California state government, to reset the phone with a, with a known password, passcode. Um, somebody was not thinking, was not thinking that um, if you did that, what you essentially did was you made a brand new telephone, whatever was on the telephone went away, you can't see it, all you can do is log in with your new Apple ID. The data is still there. It's still there. It's like, um, it's like when you delete a file from your computer. The whole file doesn't go away. Just the first couple of lines of it that tells the computer all about the file where it's located, what kind of file it is, what it's supposed to do, is it an operations file, is it a data file, what is it? So the first couple of lines just simply goes away. And the, um, and for all intents and purposes, uh, it's gone. Well, we know that not to be the case, so um, after the FBI had kicked themselves, 
rather swiftly about this. They went to Apple and said, we need you to break into the phone and give us the data. Well, Apple presented them with four things that they could do right away on their own benches to see if they could get into the phone. Unbeknownst to them, uh, unbeknownst to Apple, that the, uh, the phone had been reset. And so the FBI went ahead and did this. They, they did the things that Apple suggested that they do, and all of it was not going to work. And the last thing that uh, the FBI did was say, okay, uh, please go to iCloud. Here's the phone. Here's the, the and uh, give us the data that's there on iCloud. If that's all we can get, that's all we can get. Um, the uh, last update from the phone to iCloud was like two months before all of this happened. And so... Um, and among other things, uh, Apple divined that uh, someone had reset the phone lately. So they questioned the FBI about that. And once it was determined that this is what they had done, they plump and plainly told the FBI, well, you've messed it up and we can't help you. The FBI, not being people to take no for an answer, went to some of their own people and said, are they telling us the truth? And those people said, um, yeah, perhaps they are, but perhaps there's a way to do this. And so they thought about it for a little while, and they went to court, because Apple was being non-compliant with their requests, because they couldn't fulfill their request. They went to court and they got an order um, from a judge to tell Apple to do a few things. Okay. The first has to do with um, Why did my mind just go blank? Well, you're a senior. <laughs> yeah, senior moment. The first has to do with how uh, the FBI and Apple can access the phone. And there's only one way to do it now that it's been reset, and that is through a USB cable from, a, from the phone to a computer. Once that's done, um, they, Apple can rejig the phone to access uh, the phone with a computer then what the FBI wants done next is for software to be installed on the phone from an Apple computer that says, defeat this whole idea of if we make 10 guesses and we get it wrong, the phone wipes. That's possible. That's possible. Um, speed up the process because the if we guess wrong, the phone will go quiet for five minutes and we've got to wait five minutes to try the next one. So uh, speed it up so that we can get a couple of thousand guesses an hour. In other words, brute force the telephone to get the PIN number to open the phone. Entirely doable. Uh, the last thing that they wanted them to do was to rewrite the Apple operating system for the telephone to defeat all of the security measures that the phone has. Apple also said that this was doable. It would be a huge burden on us we would have to dedicate many, many, many company resources to do this. It's like writing a brand new operating system for a telephone. It's doable. But we're not going to do that. We don't care what you say. We're not doing that. They have a good reason. When 
Apple makes software for their telephones. They embed in that software a key that only Apple knows. That's what's called a signing authority. And when the telephone gets new software, it looks for this signing authority that says, yes, I'm genuine Apple software. Here's the key to prove it. And it will go ahead and load the software. That key is the only thing that keeps that telephone safe. It's the only thing. My own telephone, I can defeat that and I can tell it to load software from anywhere in the world. An Android phone. You can't do that with an Apple phone. If it's not genuine Apple software, you can't have it. The reason that Apple won't do this is that if that key ever gets loose into the wild, every iPhone on the planet is at risk. And if someone should find out that an entity of the government has this key, do you think it would be safe? Do you really think it would be safe? Um, there is in this world of uh, computers a thing called a honeypot. It's, uh, it's a place where people know that really important stuff is stored. And so you go to the, hon the honeypot and you try and get the stuff out. Okay? And there are, there are servers that, um, from government entities that are attacked hundreds of thousands of times a day to get what's stored on these servers. If somebody knew that the keys to the kingdom were stored on a government server, okay, multiply that by a hundred. It would be millions of attacks a day till somebody got it. And that means that the people that look after government computers have to be right every single time. The hacker has to be right once. Once. So out of a million attacks, the government has to be right a million times to stop the attack. A determined hacker, using every trick that he knows and some that he's guessing at, has to be right once. Okay, this secret is going to remain safe? Mm, no. It's, it's a government entity. Now, all of us here are old enough to remember and understand that when we were children, when we went to school at least a couple, three times a year, we were told to get under our desks. Everybody remember that? No, you don't remember being told, get under your desk right now. Was it maybe six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old? Ladies and gentlemen, there was a reason for that, and it was the stupidest reason on the planet, but there was a reason for it. Because the Americans had let loose. It had gotten out of their control. The atomic bomb. Okay? Two years after. It was only two years after the first bombs were used in anger. The Soviet Union had theirs. Was the secret safe? Right. In Tim Cook's mind, letting the keys to the kingdom go in this manner and being forced, being forced by the government to write this code and give it to them is the same thing as recreating the atomic bomb 70 years ago. Okay? 
It's that important. And Cook has said, we don't have that, and we will not create it. As of yesterday, the Department of Justice, which is not the FBI, it's their boss, stepped in and said, we're going to sue you to make you, make you do it. So that's where it stands right now. We're going to sue you to make you do it. Yes? So this key, is it just for the Apple phone? It, it is for all Apple software. So your iPad. Well, okay. I don't have an Apple phone, so. Well, it's, it, then you are, if you've got a, an Android phone or a Windows phone, it, it doesn't really have anything to do with you. But what it really is, is that every year, um, Apple sells probably 70 or 80 million phones. And they've been at it now for about six years. So the number is approaching 1 billion telephones that will no longer be secure. Can you not change the code for just no, the one? No, no, no. Uh, the, the, this key to the kingdom is uh, a key that when, when the, the phone looks for new software, it looks for that key to say, are you genuine Apple software? If you're, if you're not, I'm not going to load you. And so the government can make all the software in the world that they want to hack into this phone. If they haven't got the key, it's not going to work. It won't work. It can't work. It's just the nature of the beast. And so... There's where uh, Tim Cook has said, no, we will not give you this, and we will not write the software with the key to give to you. You'll lose it. You'll lose it. You're an irresponsible seven-year-old. You'll lose it. He's probably right. He's probably right. Yes, sir? I think there's, there's the beginnings of a public outcry. There is. Starting up now. Um, and it has been going ever since last Wednesday when the, these stories broke. Um, there are two ways to look at this public outcry of whether Apple should cave or not. And you'll hear it from everybody that's jumping in front of a television camera. If you listen to their arguments carefully, you will see that those people that are insisting that Apple must do this yesterday are using very narrow arguments. These are dead terrorists. There's important information on that phone. Who gives a fat monkeys about dead terrorists? I want the information off that phone. Apple, give it to me now. That's the argument that is used by one side. The other argument is starting to get equal television time in that it's not about this one thing. The government can say all they want. We'll just use it on this one phone. But if they have the capability, they already know that they have hundreds of other cases of drug dealers and car thieves and you name it, that they'll say, oh, well, we've got this from, from this really important uh, terrorism case, uh, but hey, it'll work for the drug dealer, it'll work for the car thief, and it'll work for anybody else that we want to investigate. The secret will be out. The secret will be out. It, they can't stop it. They can't help it. So those are the two sides of the argument. One is a very narrow argument about dead terrorists. The other is a wider argument about can we trust the government to do what is necessary not just to protect us from terrorists. Well, there's terrorists out there. We gotta have all of this stuff. You gotta give it to us. Oh, really? The one thing that 
um, I look at in this instance is folks giving up some of their rights to insist that the government keep us safe. That's the crux of the other argument, the wider argument. Well, you got to give up a little bit so we can keep you safe. A little bit? A little bit of what? Your security that you can keep a secret that must be kept. Okay? Individually. That's an individual thing. Now, in this country, uh, we kind of follow a little bit lockstep with Americans and British law and stuff like that. So, if, uh, if this thing does become um, a, a way of, of looking at law in North America or, the, or um, through British common law, um, we're done for. <laughs> And the Apple company as a telephone company, I think, would probably be done for as well because they can't sell. After all of these years of saying our, our product is safe from scrutiny, that uh, our product is no longer safe from scrutiny, but it's a nice phone for $770. Would you like to buy it? No, I'll buy a $400 um, Android phone, please, because they are no better. Right? So the Apple company would take a huge hit. The, their, their alternative is to leave North America altogether and not be a North American American company. They could do that too, but uh, it would be, um, that would be the nuclear option for them. Okay, any questions about how this is working out so far? Is this well, they're, they're, software? yeah, it's, it's, it's all about Apple software. Software. Re really, right now it's all about Apple software. Um, yes, um, um, iPads do have this technology in them to keep the data on them safe, but it's, um, but it, it, the software for, for an iPad and for an iPhone are virtually the same. They need this. Um, this key to be able to write software to them, whether it's over wi uh, wireless, Wi-Fi, or whether it's plugged into a computer, they, they need this key. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes? I don't think there's a country in the world that they could move to that wouldn't eventually want the same, the same key. Um, to have the billions, almost trillions, of dollars that Apple represents to an economy. There are some folk out there who would say, we will protect you from this, well, to if, have that. If Donald Trump becomes president, is that what he said? He <laughs> yeah. Um, the, remember <laughs> that, yeah, rem remember that Apple and all of the other big tech companies in North America are very closely aligned with the Irish Free State. Ireland would love to have them. Ireland would love to have them. And they would, in a heartbeat, if they thought they were going to lose this, they would say, if Ireland will protect us, that's where we go. That's where we go. And they'll do it. They have to. Because their shareholders would demand it. Well, the American government is probably their biggest shareholder. No, no. Their, their, their uh, shareholder base is widely held, uh, mostly in institutions, banks. Um, um, mortgage companies, stuff like that, um, um, pension, pension plants. Uh, that's where Apple is most widely held. 
Uh, individual investors, sure, there's, there's a lot of them out there, but that's where it's most widely held. Where the power base is, by the way. It's your, as an individual investor, you have no power. But uh, as, as a pension fund in California, which um, holds about one-third of all California pensions, uh, you have power. Um, okay. Any other ideas, questions about how this is going to play out in the next few months? It's going to be really, really interesting to to watch this, how quickly it comes down. Um, and along with that, remember that um, should all of this go to a court case in a district court of the United States and be ruled upon there by a three-judge panel, Whoever loses, whoever loses, goes to the Supreme Court where they're, they are currently short one justice. An eight to eight and a four to four ruling in the Supreme Court, a tie, would send it back to the lower court where the lower court's ruling would stand. It would not be precedent in law, but it would stand until somebody could come along with another case exactly like it with a full complement of justices on the Supreme Court. Boy, does this ever get good. It gets interesting, more interesting every day. Yes? Why can't the FBI give the phone to Apple to get the information? They, they could, and they tried. And uh, because they... Because um, because they messed up um, by having this phone reset, and they tried to pass it off as well, the California government reset the phone, and for a couple of days that seemed to be true until the uh, California government threw the FBI under the bus and said they told us to, and so people went looking into it, and yep, sure enough, the FBI told them to. That's not on the airwaves. It was for a while. Was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was for a while. It's uh, If you want to go looking on Google, I'll find it for you. <laughs> um, so it gets more interesting as time goes by. Then you have ignoramuses like Donald Trump. Um, Throwing, throwing their half a cent's worth into it. Um, well, he can, he can take on the whole, he can take on anybody. Yeah, yeah. But, but the, the, the problem with Donald Trump's line of palaver is that uh, about one third of the American public uh, believes him. <laughs> <laughs> well, they believe in the other guy they have, the guy they have now, they don't believe in him. No, they don't they believe. They believe in the last guy, yeah. the guy before him. No. So what's the difference? It's, yeah. Do we believe it's, the guy we got here in Canada? No. He, he'll, uh, he'll cave just like the rest of them. Um, nice enough fellow, but he'll cave. Um, okay. Any more questions about how this is going to go down. Uh, okay, it says it's there. It says I got nothing though. All right, um, with that, I didn't have, I can't really call that a rant. Okay, pretty close. <laughs> it's pretty close, but really this is, this is an information meeting, so I'm not going to call it a rant. <laughs> When somebody does something m more really, really stupid, um, maybe next week there will be a rant. <laughs> okay, any, uh, let's do a Q&A uh, about any concerns, uh, questions you may have about Windows. Okay. Yes? Just following up on last class's thing where you were talking about pinning something to quick access. 
when I plugged in my MP3 player, I mean, I, I opened it up and I looked, everything was there, browse, blah, 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 blah. But it also had pin to quick access. Yeah. And my question was, you know, just hesitant. Does it go to this PC to a, if I pin it, my MP3 player taskbar? Yeah. It'll go to this PC as a... As a yes, it will. Yes, um, okay, so here's, here's your... Uh, Here's your folder on the taskbar that if you open this up, it's going to be uh, essentially what's called quick access. My file explorer. Yeah. Yes. yes, that's quick. Okay. So All that's... right. Now, you'll see that if you do pin it to your quick access, yes. um, whether it's attached to the computer or not, the quick access shortcut will be there. Okay. And I can demonstrate that with this number right here, 192.168.2.14. Okay. That happens to be my main computer in my office. Oh. It's not connected to that computer right now, but it stays there. And when this computer gets close to that and it's on the same wireless network, I can click on it and it will open. The same with your MP3 player. Once it's attached to the computer, you can click on it and it will open. Right. But in quick access, the entry will be there. All right? Yeah. I mean, it puts a shortcut in and everything, yeah. apparently, and it's, yeah. so I'll be able to just go to yeah. it. Yeah, and, and it's, you should be able to see it under this PC as well. Right. Okay. Yes, and there it is. Yes. Okay. That's what I wanted, so. Yeah. Okay. I followed your instructions carefully, and I put iTunes in. Yeah. And, and I'm having fun browsing. I haven't done anything yet. I have my little money sitting there waiting, and I haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> the first person I screamed at, what did I do when I did buy something? You know? But it's a, they'll tell you how to take the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really easy. Here's a tutorial. That's the one that's got to connect. The iTunes have to connect with the MP3 player, and then yeah. one goes into the other. Yeah. You know, so this is what yeah. I needed. Yeah, I'm glad it's, uh, I got it finally. <laughs> Good. <laughs> got it correctly, by the way. Now, is it, your MP3 player, is it, uh, um, is it is an it, Apple? It's a song, no, it's not an Apple. Can okay, it? so, but iTunes found it okay. Well, if I haven't asked it to yet. I'm hoping it will. I mean, it's not old, 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 but it's... Uh, um, don't be surprised if it can't song. find it. Okay, Philip Songbird. Yeah, don't be surprised if it can't find it. Okay. Um, what you will be able to find, though, is if you go to this PC, uh, you will find it here uh, under the, the devices and drives. Yes. You'll find it there, yeah. and then you can, um, you can um, <laughs> go to that device and click on it and open it up, mm -hmm. and, and it will... Uh, keep opening it up until you drill down into the music folders that are there. Oh, good. Now, okay. um, was there software that came with it? Yes. Okay, load that software onto your computer if it'll take it. Mm -hmm. The reason being is that when you put music onto the computer, that's the easiest way to get it onto the MP3 player uh, if iTunes can't see it. Okay. <sighs> All right. Um, anything else here that uh... Microsoft keep asking me when I'm on the computer yeah, doing yeah. things? The little zip comes in and sign says, in again. Sign, sign in, in again, again under your Microsoft, Microsoft account, account, and then it goes zip out. Are you signed in? Uh, yeah, I've got a. I've got. I've so got when you open the computer, you Microsoft you sign account. in. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, that may be that you're not signed in to iCloud as well. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. It may be saying that, yes, you're signed into your Microsoft account, yes. but you have to sign in separately to things like iCloud. Oh, see. I found that to yeah. be true on mine. With a different My password? Hmm? With a different password? Or with the same no, no. It's, it's with the, your, 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 stuff your, you've already got. Yeah. Your, your, account. your Microsoft Cloud is the same password. Okay. It's, it's. Mine yesterday did it when I went into a Microsoft page. And I thought, why is it asking for a Microsoft? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Signature. I'm already in the Microsoft page. So um, well, when yeah, when, when you. If, if you, if you click, it'll take you into your settings. And it wants yeah. you to change an account. 
It wants me and to so use what my I've been doing is just exit oh. out of it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so if it's wanting to force you to change over. Yeah, the, um, <coughs> this little icon right here uh, on your taskbar is uh, the Windows Store. Yes. Okay. Now, to get into the Windows Store, um, you can, if you are not signed in in Windows 10 with, uh, with your password, and when I say your password, you sign on and it says, Block, dot 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 at your email address then your password that is your Microsoft account sign in okay if you're not using that if you're just using your name and a sign in to a local account which is not a Microsoft account which is not a Microsoft account okay it's just a local account okay if you're signing in with a local account Yeah. Um, like if you if you look at your sign in screen, and it's got your email name, at. But this doesn't take you to that. No, I mean I'm talking about when you sign in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's it's your email name at your email address, right? Yeah. Okay. Then you're signing in. With your password, you're signing into a Microsoft account. Yes. If you just see your name and no ampersand at email address, then you're signing into a local account that has a password. Okay, and that means that you're not signing in to uh, Microsoft um, uh, into the Microsoft Store, and you're not signing in to things like cloud services, which are Microsoft accounts, or into uh, things like business services or something like that, which would be part of your Microsoft account. If you're signed in on a local account, you're not signing into those services. That's why it may be, you know, giving you an indication, well, I need to sign into iCloud. Or to, yeah, or I need you to sign into your Microsoft account uh, so I can show you things on the store or something like that. Okay, so that's the thing to look at the most. How much of that went? Yeah. <laughs> I wondered if they were confused because I all my this. emails come in on another email, email account. And and no, no, that that has nothing to do with it. No, yeah, that's. Like I use a, I use live for my uh, ID mail, yeah, yeah, the good mail, Microsoft for the junk mail. Yeah, okay, but here again, um, when you sign in, mm -hmm. what name are you signing in under? Signing in under the Microsoft. Okay. So always signing in under the Microsoft until okay. I to use Windows Live Mail. And then you are signing into a different email account. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Fine. That's nothing wrong with that. No, and they yeah. wanted you to put it in the app. I think what yeah. they want you to do is switch everything over to the Windows Live one. And yeah. Got, yeah. I'm not doing that. No, you don't have to. Mail and the yeah. other mail. Yeah, right. you don't have to. One's for ID and one's for use. So I just exit. Yeah. They wanted me to go See. into the app and put both. They wanted me to list yeah. the app, and I didn't want to do yeah, that. You do, you don't want to do that. On the app, you yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. It's too It's too confusing. No, I know. So, okay. Well, I just... I don't worry about it. I just do it. You know, I just, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. okay, you're in my place again, and you know, nothing happens. So. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> it's convincing me more and more to buy another Mac, not PC. <laughs> um. Okay. If you're if you're in the market, I have. Oh no! Mm -hmm. I, it's it's not ready to flash yeah. yet, but. You know, it's six years old. Yeah, uh, well, so is mine, and um, I've upgraded it just about as much as I can, but I'm just going to let it go now you until it's, that's yeah, the last time. yeah, just let it go until it doesn't work anymore, and then. But I, I don't have patience as I get older to deal with all this, like, when it comes up and asks me all these things, I just want to throw my tablet. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, I couldn't even get in my um, 
in my uh, Gmail until I changed the password to I hate Microsoft and it seems to work. <laughs> 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 um, I, I, could, may I suggest that you put a number before or after that because there are many, many, many people that you're using that as password? <laughs> Okay, um, let's see if this is back on yet. Nope. I guess we got no internet today. Yes? Remember we were talking about the event viewer? Yes. And you said it's a bad thing? How come, it's, don't in, do it. how, how come it's in our administrative tools? <laughs> because that's, that, that place is for guys like me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's not there. Yeah, yeah, it's a no-no for you. It's all, yeah, you can... Yeah, yeah. You can look at it. You can look at it. All it will do is scare you. Yeah, well, I don't want to see it because it's full of errors and yeah, and it didn't do this on time and and that timed out and error, 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 yeah. and you think there's something wrong with your computer and there is not. It's functioning perfectly. Um. Anything else? Well, I've had to do. System restores three times November oh, on Windows 10, January, and February. Is that, do you think, got something to do with the same thing with this? Um, okay, now why did you do the system restores? Because I get, I'm padlocked out of Windows services. I get the little gold padlock down in the taskbar. Right. I get no Windows, I get no live mail, I get no. Um, I can't get my yeah, I don't know why it would stop using Windows services. I know, neither do I. I don't know if it's confused about me or, or my, because I mean, everything's legit when we, when you put it, when we did my Microsoft account. Yeah. It was all done correctly. But, I, I mean, the, the system w restore works perfectly. It takes maybe 15, 20 minutes, yeah. and everything is just comes right to thank you, and I go a week back. To a day when everything was fine. Yeah. Now, when when you do this, yeah. um, it, has there been a system update, or are you just looking at uh, a system restore There's point? There's been some updates. Um, yes. And yeah. this is what I'm, they're, they're doing something, and they're saying, eh, "I don't know about her," and they will padlock me. Yeah. Yeah. If if it was just a system restore point. Um, that you had that you had to use this, then I would say there's something wrong with your computer. But if you're getting updates and this is happening, then um, there's something wrong with the way your computer's configured about your account. Yeah, I mean, when I go in to choose the date, all these things about oh yeah, there was an update, update, you know, and and you can see the whole list of updates and things that went on before. And it's always after a number of updates. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not afraid to do it because you taught me properly and, and I, it all comes beautifully back in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, this is three times now. So, November, January, and February. I really, without going into great depth oh, of I hunting know. for what's wrong, yeah. I really can't say what might be wrong. I, I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah. far, touch wood, everything works when yeah. I do it. So. Have you tried booting the Microsoft support to ask them why? There is no such thing as Microsoft support on the telephone. Please do not try to talk to anybody there. They will pick your pocket. If you have four hissy fits and stay on the line, it takes an hour, but you get somewhere eventually. Well, yeah, like I had so much trouble because of an Android tablet. Yeah. And they, they, I, I did enough hissy fitting. They put me through four different levels till I finally got somebody who would help. Me. Yeah. If you, uh, uh, what I am saying is, is okay. If if you got through to somebody at Microsoft, good for you. But if you open your computer and you Google Microsoft tech support, everything on the first twenty pages is a scam. Oh really? Well, I just yeah. use the phone. I yeah. Don't know. It's a scam. I don't understand sometimes if you ask for help anyway. I don't know what they're telling me. I, I what? You know, <laughs> I, I, no, it's too geeky for me. Yeah. <laughs> Take it to somebody. Take it to somebody. Um, okay. 
Um, okay, we don't have internet access today. I don't know why. I've reset the damn thing twice. Um, so, uh, anything that uh, we need to look at in the way of um, programs that you might be having problems with or like to know about? Um, yes? I was just wondering what her problem is. Her computer on most of the time to take the update? That happens on a regular basis? So if she's having okay, updates, uh, updates usually happen on the second Tuesday of every month. Yeah. That's called Patch Tuesday. Uh, the last patch that came in was a beaut. It was a doozy. It was a big one. Mm -hmm. It uh, took the best part of an hour to do. I let them do it at 3 in the morning. I yeah, the, yeah. The yeah. but, uh, but when, you, when you turn your computer on in the morning, if you've missed the 3, the three in the morning update, it will just start to do it. And then you know by lunch it's it's ready to to install the update. You go to shut your computer off, and it'll say, "Okay, I'm going to do this update now." And uh, so if it takes ten minutes, it takes yeah. If it takes ten minutes, it takes ten minutes. If it takes all day, it's all day. Okay. I'll be looking for one because I didn't get a dandy one yet. Last time when you said about the update for ten, remember I said I didn't get it yet. Well, yeah. Then I got it maybe a week later. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm all in line. I don't I th I think uh, Microsoft servers are becoming o overwhelmed uh, with requests for updates because when I'm repairing computers and I'm putting in um, operating systems that need to be updated, I do Windows click on Windows update, it will sit there for 2 days trying to find the damn updates. So, I don't know what the story is on that. Settings and read them. They'll say this is an update for Internet Explorer. Well, I don't yeah. have Internet Explorer. Do that? Does that skip me? I'm yeah. Sure. No, you have it. Well, it's the, yeah. Okay, I don't use it. It's, I didn't, yeah. I didn't yeah. bring it in. I use Edge and, and yeah. you know, yeah. and Chrome. So yeah. So it's still going to go into my machine, though. No yes. Matter. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All of these programs uh, from Microsoft will be updated that way. Okay. Um. Okay, we're down to the last 15 minutes. Is there anything that you would like me to uh, dive into for a few minutes? Yes. Yeah, I just wondered how good the Surface tablet is. From okay, tablets. Better deal than iPad. Yeah. Um, I have said before that if you're considering a tablet, you're considering it for a different reason than owning a computer. Um, tablets are what I call a media consumer. And so if you're getting on the internet to read a newspaper or to uh, view a video or to even to read something that one of your friends has sent to you an email, uh, a document or something like that, you're consuming media. If you want to create media, if you want to create documents, if you want to create videos, if you want to create audios, uh, audios that you can send to your friends, if you're creating something, then what you want is a full-on computer or a laptop. If you're just consuming media, then yes, a tablet is maybe a way to go. They're smaller, okay, 10 inch, 11 inch. They have a keyboard. Yeah, one, yeah. Well, they started to do this because more and more people we're trying to do media creation on a tablet, and a keyboard and mouse is the way to do it. So they started to make a, um, a keyboard for your tablet that uh, allowed easier, <coughs> excuse me, easier media creation. So that's the way to look at tablets. Now the Surface tablet, the latest ones um, are what about 800 bucks, somewhere in there, with the keyboard. With the keyboard. Yeah. Which you buy separately, so you might get out of the store with eight hundred bucks, uh, maybe uh, maybe six hundred. Um, I'm not sure of the prices anymore, but I think they're in the six hundred dollar range. It's, uh, you know, you yeah. have to go to Apple always. I'd like to stay with one. System yeah, yeah, from the yeah. Um, now uh, the thing about uh, an iPad though is is that they do try and offer you programs. Uh, in the Apple iPad world that can do some media creation easily. Like you can, you can manipulate pictures and stuff like that. 
um, to fix them up, fix up the red eye, fix up the darkness, stuff, stuff like that where uh, you want to send them to your friends. They, they have programs that are easy to use on the iPad that make it easier. It's still very difficult to do on a Windows tablet and impossible to do on an Android tablet. Well, an iPad is a tablet. Um, it's uh, 11 inches or 10 inches, somewhere in that neighborhood. Even the, the mini, I think, is 9.2 or something like that. And when we talk about uh, sizes, what we're talking about is a diagonal width from here to there. Okay? It's not this width or that width. It's diagonally. So that's how we talk about the measurements of these things. Um, so if someone says, well, it's a 10-inch tablet, you might think, well, gee, that's lots of room. But for these tired old eyes, it's not much room because you're talking about a diagonal width. So um, this width here may be a lot shorter than what you're expecting. Okay. Uh, micro, or, uh, Apple tablets are mostly uh, very close to 4 by 3 aspect ratio. In other words, pretty close to square. These uh, elongated um, um, tablets and screens um, are usually in the order of 16 by 9 or 14 by 9. Something like that as an aspect ratio, which is quite wide. Um, as as for sizes, um, does one do more than the other? Um, not really. No. I mean, the the uh, here again, if you're talking about uh, a small laptop, which is what an Apple laptop might be at 13 inches, uh, there's just about nothing that they can't do. Uh, even a Chromebook, um, which is which is the Chrome operating system from Android or from Google, um, there's not many things that they can't do. Um, and so uh, if you're looking for a full-on computer at a, at a reasonable price, um, perhaps investigate the Chromebook. But, but it has to be, for it to work properly, it has to be online all the time and signed into your Google account. It's, it's, it's using all of that to help you um, make, um, do the computing you want to do. What's all this silly talk about Facebook wanting to be the new Google? Um, a while ago, uh, Facebook made a pretty hefty investment into the realm of virtual reality. Okay, the goggles? Yes. Okay, virtual reality. And they are working towards um, a system whereby virtual reality and augmented reality will be your social device. Is, is it going to go anywhere? I don't know. Uh, it all depends on what you can do with it. Uh, but do they want to be? Do they want to be Google? No, they don't want to be Google. They want to be themselves. But they are going to change over the next five years. They will change because they can see that um, Facebook, Facebooking your friends and spending hours on there a day watching your friends' posts come in and out and playing the Facebook games. And you know, there are people that you know. That is uh, pretty much a part of their day. Their whole life. Yeah. <laughs> well, not their whole life, but a good portion of their day. <laughs> um, and so um, Facebook can see the writing on the wall. There has to be something more because this is going to get stale. That's going to get stale. So they're, they're casting around for something more to do to entertain you and keep the, uh, and keep the information flowing. It's all about information flowing from you to them. That's what it's about.
information flowing from you to them. Um, personally, virtual reality, I can't see where it's going to be of any use to you because you're going to be sitting in a chair uh, or a game console or something like that um, uh, being entertained. Now, um, augmented reality, AI. Now, there's something. There's something. Augmented reality is where you put on a set of goggles, sure, but you can see through them. But things get broadcast to the, to the goggles about what you're doing. So if you are repairing a car, and you can tell the augmented reality goggles, all right, I'm at the engine bay now and I want to uh, change an alternator. Walk me through the steps. And the augmented reality will show you the wrench you need to get, the bolt you need to put it on, and the direction you need to turn it. That's augmented reality. All right? That, that, that's something very simple, but you can see just how useful that would be for anything that you might want to do that you don't have the, the initial skills to do. When I get Alzheimer's, it'll tell me how to, you know, make a cup of coffee. And yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and, the other, and the other thing about it is, is that, um, yes, you, you, can, you can make a joke, a little bit of a joke about that right now, but what that's doing is a lot more stimulation for your mind than virtual reality, which is like um, my grandson does right now. He, he doesn't have a VR, uh, VR headset, but he sits in his mom's basement in the middle of the night with a 23-inch with a uh, monitor this far from his face. Okay, wow. He may as well be in virtual reality. Okay, Is it doing anything to his brain besides turning it to mush? No. <laughs> But if he was using augmented reality to, uh, to learn something, to do something he's never done before, now that's, that's exercising the little gray cells, which if, uh, for all of us, uh, I had a senior moment a little while ago, those senior moments become more and more and more as we go along. Well, if we can, if we can keep active, in that vein of augmented reality, it's got to help. It's got to. So how long is it take to get it? Uh, augmented reality, I think, will be um, part of our lives in five years. Virtual reality will be part of our lives. Is it refined enough that, say, if they're teaching you to do something with a right-handed person's doing, a left-handed person mm -hmm. can... Switch it? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. But like I said, think about the possibilities. Okay, uh, remove an alternator from your car or swap it out. Uh, um, a surgeon has never done this operation before, but he's uh, he's with uh, in augmented reality with a colleague who's done it a thousand times before, and so the colleague can say, "Just follow my hands." Okay, we'll get through this. Follow my hands. It's, oh, you'll keep up. This kind of stuff that I'm talking about, um, the tech industry has learned its lesson over the last two decades. That when the tech industry makes something now that's brand new, a new idea, a new way of doing things, it's not a real struggle to grasp the idea of how it works and how it can work for you. So in things like uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, you may very well just put on a pair of gloves, okay, and uh, a set of goggles that you can see through. Now. The goggles know where your hands are because they're following the gloves. So you may be able to go into the kitchen and do a brand new recipe. You may be able to... Um, it doesn't even have to be new with you, though. Just a recipe with you. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Be nice. This one doesn't cook. <laughs> Be nice. But okay. Um, you uh, you think uh, you think yourself. Uh, you were just in the thrift store and you saw uh, an Afghan in there that was really, really, really neat. And you thought to yourself, boy, I could make that in a couple of weeks, or could I? In augmented reality, put the gloves on, put the, uh, put the VR headset on, get out your needles. Augmented reality will show you how, what to do with your hands, how to move the material to make what you want to make. It will show you how to do it. Okay? So, that, that's, that's what I find most fascinating about uh, what's coming in down the pike in the next two years to five years. Okay, we've uh, pretty much used up our time here, folk. Um, I will get this online as soon as I can. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime till our next, uh, our next meeting, uh, please send me an email with your questions. Okay? That's Computer Club Listen for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.